A well-behaved woman is trim and proper. Chores always done. Not a hair out of place. When the husband comes home, she greets him with a smile. I'm sorry, what the fuck? Are you tired of Hitler? I'm here, no shame. <laughs> okay, one liar as a kid can find another liar. <laughs> I want that stricken from the record. <laughs> What is she gonna learn if she doesn't have a feather? Yeah, I could go fuck in the big house. You're a mess, girl. I am here to audition for Babysitter's Club extras. I brought my own hammer. <laughs> <laughs>
lower class. And okay. in order to make ends meet at that point, Jacques also served as a village official. Oh. So that also provided like a little bit of extra money. Okay, hustling. I yeah. get it. He collected taxes and he headed the local watch, which was basically a group of citizen police before okay. police existed. And they, they were like the neighborhood watch. Literally. <laughs> um, they were there to keep an eye out, keep the peace, deter those ne'er do wells, mm-hmm. all that shit. Mm-hmm. Hey, what are you doing over there? Uh, I'm watching you. <laughs> Okay, got it. Excellent. <laughs> Doing a service. We like it. The family lived in a little town called Dom Remy, which is in the northeast of France. All right. Northeast of France. We Got are cold. We're just going to assume that okay. her birth was in this year. We don't know for sure. Records are not right. great from around that time. Uh, Jeanne and her siblings grew up on the farm, earning a meager living and generally being peasants in the 15th century France. Yeah. Lots of good dirt over here. <laughs> I, I, I didn't elect him. I didn't vote for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't vote for king. Sorry, we're going on a Monty Python binge. We are an anachronistic syndicalist commune. Good dirt over here. <laughs> I just love that. She spun wool. Uh, she helped in the fields with the animals. Her mom provided Jeanne with what little education she ever had, which was religious in nature. I mean, she's doing the best she can. Yep, she's good learning by the Bible, like a good little French peasant. By the Bible. By the Bible. As a French peasant. Yep. Mm-hmm. The Bible. The Bible. That's what they say mm-hmm. in France. Okay. They also have royales with cheese. <laughs> What? <laughs> From uh, Pulp Fiction? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, that didn't land as like I thought it would. <laughs> Never mind. So what? <laughs> News bulletin. Thank God that was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere in France. Ah. Huh. <clears throat> now, Jeanne was born at the very end of a long period of peace in what became known as the 100 Years' War, even though it took place over 116 years over three distinct periods. Yeah, I think I remember that was a (laughs) um, fun trick question I used to get on history tests was, how long was the 100 Years' War? And I always said 107 (laughs) for some reason. Nope, 116. 116. (laughs) Over three distinct periods. Acts Periods. one, two, and three. Literally. <gasps> we should do a Broadway play about it. <laughs> no. No? Absolutely okay. not. No. This is a bloody, terrible, terrible You can war. make that fun. Sorry. I'm going to try. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're, we're trying. We're doing our best. I just didn't write a musical about it. I will do my best. <sighs> All right. So the piece came after a treaty that happened 23 years earlier. We call this time the second piece. Okay. Basically, the English had gotten tired of the high cost of the Caroline War, which was the middle one. Mm. And that uh, the officials in charge of that one, the officials in charge of whatever, of who makes the laws and how the wars work out. I don't know. The people, those the important ones. Right. They signed a three year truce of Luling Hem. And then each nation kind of got involved in their own little dramas. So, like, we've got, you know, the Burgundians and the France over here. And then we've got the English and the Scottish and the Irish and all this over here. They've got, you know, they're all dealing with their own shit. Yeah. England, Wales, and Scotland. It was a mess. Yeah. all It's it's all a mess. Yeah. Um, France's issues were basically that the king of France, Charles, he lost his marbles. Oh no! Charles the Somebody Mad. Somebody gave him some new marbles. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, was he the one who thought he was made of glass? Charles the Mad. He was called. I think so. Yeah. Oh, that I think is so. interesting. Like as he got older, he it it got worse and worse. I think so. Yeah. Right. Where, like he had poles. T- uh, there was either that or there was an English king. I think my. I think you're talking about the English. I king. I might be, but funny enough, I'm pretty sure. Watch me be wrong. But his name, I think, was Charles. Kings that are mad usually come from generations of generations of systematic inbreeding. Yeah. So there's a lot of mad kings. It happens. George III was pretty bad. So Charles the Mad descended into that famed madness for good, and his brother and his uncles had to deal with ruling all of this fractured nation on their own. The actual job. Yeah, the actual job. (laughs) That they did not sign up for. So, of course, when the matter of power became an issue, Charles's brother, Louis, Louis of Valois, uh, uh-huh. Duke of Orleans, he challenged Philip the Bold, who was the Duke of Burgundy. Can we take a second to appreciate all the nicknames? The Duke 
of no 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 like charles the or whoever the bold Ch- charles the mad charles the mad philip the bold philip the bold yes like what would your monarchly nickname like your what what would your legacy because there's like uh richard the lionheart <laughs> you know come on lauren the loquacious <laughs> Love it. Mine, <laughs> Hannah the Loud. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say Lauren the Loud Mouth, but it's not even that I'm loud. It's no, just that I, I... I've got the decibels, girl. Yeah. <laughs> I know this about myself. Gary has to remind me to like turn... He'll pick me up from the pool and I'll get in the car and all of a sudden I'm going from like this huge pool where I've got to like raise my voice yeah. for everything you, to I'm in the car and he's like, yeah. you don't... You, just turn it down. You're yeah, fine. yeah. My mom will literally you. do this thing from Friends that uh, Ross does. If you, yes, I know exactly what you're okay, talking about. Okay, if anybody um, who's listening doesn't know what I'm talking about, there's if an episode I went to of a Friends. Friends trivia night. I would win. No, nah, you and I <laughs> would need to be on different teams because otherwise it wouldn't be fair. Um, that or Family Guy. I also know that trivia back and forth. I don't give a fuck about Family Guy. I am. So, I got so tired of Seth MacFarlane and his shit <laughs> so quickly. After a while, I did, but it took me like. Eight, seven, eight seasons. No, it took me like seven or eight episodes. Oh, <laughs> no, was, no, 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 no. There no. are clips. There are clips that I enjoy. But yes, there's yeah. some, but then there's some that you're like, oof. But anyway, back to the 1400s. All right, Zombie <laughs> Hannah the Loud. Yes, yeah, so, thank you, Zombie Hannah the Loud. That is now being added to zombie my Zombie Hannah Frog Thumbs the Loud. Where the fuck did frog thumbs come from? I don't remember. You said something about how your thumbs were frog thumbs. Oh, spring loaded. Oh my God, it was funny. I don't remember. I what can't happened. remember either, but I guess that's canon. <laughs> yes, it All made right. it in. Yeah, Hannah, for sure. The frog thumbs. The zombie Hannah the frog loud. thumbs the loud. Mother of loud. <laughs> Mother of <sugar>. frog thumbs. <laughs> Mother of frog thumbs. <laughs> Great legacy, guys. So. All of this struggle between Philip the Bold and Louis of Valois, they fought for a few years. And when Philip died, his son, John the Fearless, stepped in to try and gain that crown. Another title. Another yes. name. Mm-hmm. From Philip the Bold to John the Fearless as the Duke of Burgundy. Oh. Uh, this was an issue, though, because now it's a, like another layer of relation removed from what it already was for the crown. So John basically has no claim at all against louis who was charles brother yeah john decided it wasn't his time to give up though which meant that he had to get rid of louis so john ordered louis assassination ah yeah. how did they how did they do this so i oh um by this time louis had a son named charles and he'd become a prominent family name mm. um the armagnac basically became the ruling powers because they found out right away that John had ordered the hit. It'd been done right on the streets of Paris. They just went and killed him. Remind me of the family tree because there's lots of names oh and I'm God. trying to remember. I know, it's crazy. It's okay. a little hard sometimes no, your fine. history. So so the, the Burgundians w- and the Duke of Burgundy, Burgundy was like a kind I'm, of a, a little... i mirroring your hand ...was gestures. a little country off to like the east of France. Okay, so, so it's in the east. we're looking at... And, and east. Jeanne lives in the eastern part of France. So okay, she lives so like a there. little north of where Burgundy is or was at the time anyway. Okay. Um, and then there's the Armagnacs, and so that is a f- large and important family in the French realm okay. that is supporters of Charles's reign, so even though big, he was mad. But so the they, big argument here is Charles versus Louis? Uh, y- yes. Okay. And so then Charles has a son named Charles. Charles. So and we'll call him Charles B. Uh, or however Char- you want. Let's call him Charlie. Charlie! L- Lil Charlie. Better. So Lil Charlie, the Armagnacs as a family kind of take him in and okay. they raise him up. Like a ward. B- basically as a ward. Okay. Because... Charlie, because Charles, big Papa Charles, Papa can't Char. can't take care of him, and the his brother and the, all these other people are trying to rule the country anyway. But uh, okay, those people thank you. are Armagnacs. Got it. So there's the Armagnacs that are standing with the King of France, Got and it. then there is the Duke of Burgundy who is claiming he wants to like install his son. He thinks that he deserves to have the King of ah. France's crown uh-huh. because. Charles shouldn't be king. Right. He's supposedly the mad. Well, and 
thank you for we'll get there. Thank so, you for doing the deep dive. By the way, that no, helped you're me fine. a lot. Um, so and and it gets it gets a little more complicated. So I'm, I'm we're, glad we we're had not a stepping there stone there. Okay. So the Armagnacs are helping Charles in his seat on the throne. The Burgundians mm-hmm. under John the Fearless are pissed. Okay. And over some um, time, both of these sides are asking the English for help to quash all this beef. Oh no. And then you there don't was, go to the English. And then there was the piracy. Ooh, the fun <laughs> stuff. English were basically using a privateering campaign, pirate, to Make against money. the trades along the English Channel as a way to irritate but not resume an all-out war. It was basically, let's piss him off let's enough. Let's poke the bear while yeah, he's asleep. Exactly. Got and it. this was, of course, a king, a move by the king, Henry IV. Oh, the so, fourth, that's right. Yes. So the, the French and the Scottish teamed up, and together they were able to raid a lot of the English coastal towns. While the right. English are raiding the French, these guys... <laughs> So it's a little like, he's stabbing us in the back. Let's go behind it, him and stab him in the back. Right. And the Scottish and the French kind of had like a, a nice little deal. Because they both hated the they English. They had an alliance against the French. Yeah. So it was just sea warfare for, for a while and, and like for a few years. Spicy boats. Spicy boats. So then Henry IV died in 1413. Um, remember, we're thinking Jean is like born in 1412, so this yeah, is yeah, around yeah. that same time. Okay. Um, so his son Henry V comes to power in England. Oh, he! I know a little something about Henry V. He's a good soldier, good warrior, good knight, and he's a f- massive dick. Yeah, he's. I a mean, that kind of massive. He's a king. massive asshole, but he's he comes, like a really dickish king. He's a dickish king. So he comes to power and under whatever laws, Henry V had a legitimate claim to the French th- throne. Yeah. Like for some fucking reason. And mm-hmm. so he holds court in 1414 and the ambassadors from Burgundy are there. And he basically Uh-oh. says, Hey, the French throne is mine and I intend to take it from Charles and the Burgundians still none too happy about being not in power. Like, yeah, they're like, go for it. Yeah. yeah. You know what? You want some help? Let's help enemy you. Enemy of my enemy. A little bit of my a friend, is a friend right now. Exactly. So in that same meeting, Henry demands the hand of Catherine of Valois, who is Charles the Mad's youngest daughter. Mm, I know like this name, Catherine of Valois. Yeah. So they say no. Yeah. Charles is like, nah, nah. All the people are like, that's yeah. stupid. And Henry gets pissed off. So Yeah, he has a little <laughs> bit of an ego. Yeah. <laughs> to and, say the least. And in response, well then, it is to be war. Oh my God. Because he got rejected. Because he got rejected. Oh, tiny Because he's a sad syndrome. little loser. In August of 1415, Henry took 15. 10,500 soldiers with him Whoa. from England, and he took them into France. And I take it this is the Battle of Anjou? Not Anjou. I don't know. They, lead, they laid Anjou? siege to the town of Harfleur, went on a raiding expedition. This is a bunch of battles. In, yeah, he, I'm trying to summarize so quickly a yeah. massively confusing and complicated war. Yes. So just hang with me I here. mean, the man did not stop. He yeah. kept going. Yeah. yeah. No, he was like, all right, like, d- did this battle? Move on to the next one. So they laid siege to the ha- town of Harfleur. They went on a raiding expedition. They faced a much larger army down the road, and they still won out handily. And when I say mm. handily, I mean in that in one campaign, Henry and his army managed to take out a 40% of all French nobility. All of the, them. Oh. The 40% of everyone Ooh, left. Half of all your rich friends are gone. Most of the Armagnac leaders that were supporting the French crown were killed. Oh, fuck. And then there were more, and there were way more French prisoners taken than the size of Henry's entire army that he'd brought. So, fearing a threat to their security, he just had all of them murdered. <sighs> Yeah, that's a that's a that's a King of England move. I'm very aware this is a long elsewhere in segment, but that's we gotta okay. keep going. I all was right? like, I think this is the building a lot of context. We're building a lot of context. Okay, I wonder what the us. reason is. <laughs> uh oh. 
So years and years of wins for Henry, and at some point in all of this, Henry and the Burgundians decided they were tired of the whole John the Fearless kind of staying in the fight. So because he wanted the crown, Burgundians started hedging their bets on the legitimacy of Henry's claim yeah. over John the Fearless's claim. So Burgundians and Henry decide John's got to go. They have him assassinated in 1419. Yeah. Yeah. I don't Gone. need that thread. Zip. Yeah, done. that thread needs to be cut. No yeah, loose that one's ends. done. Loose end tied. Yeah. So now John's out of the way, and Henry decides decides to appeal Perhaps directly <laughs> little bow yep you're mine baby when you what is it when you play the game of thrones you win, win or, or you die. die love that quote mhm i also love chaos is a ladder it's a whole different episode that we're going to deal with i know oh i can't we've wait we've talked about this so much is like there's so many stupid like so many things that are in these stories that are so close to like a game of thrones well timeline. it's because he based them off of a lot of this stuff um margaret of anjou i think is who i'm thinking of because he based cersei partially on her yeah the she wolf of france um and uh is that where you think we're going with this no but I knew France, Anjou. Okay. And okay. Anjou, also a French sounding word. And I think it also means like a sauce. I don't know. We're getting distracted. Yeah, I'm sorry. ADHD. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> no more sauce tangents. All right, fine. <laughs> I'll do my sauce talk on the Patreon, guys. Sauce talk. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So, um,. All right. Uh, John is now out of the way. Henry decides to appeal directly to King Charles VI, Charles the Mad. He figures now that he's taken out the competition and taken a bunch of the land, it's a good time to sign a peace treaty with the man. He's like, I've got most of your land. But you want his throne. Yeah. I'll sign a peace treaty with you and you'll just give peacefully give me your throne. Oh, that's what he's doing. And we won't kill any more of you. I was wondering if he was going for the, look, man, look what I've done. Not even just that. They want, they, in this peace treaty, they have Charles's son, the Dauphine, illegitimized. Mm -hmm. His dad accused him of murdering John the Fearless to inherit the French throne, which was just not. That's a little backwards. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, no, 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 no. He's like pointing at the wrong guy in court. You're like, and push it over here. That's who you're really mad at. <laughs> so during a time of illness and possibly in the same time period, Henry convinces Charles to sign the Treaty of Troyes, which also allowed the marriage between himself and Catherine, who coincidentally uh. was now the only legitimate heir to the throne. Yeah. Look at your options now, girl. Your youngest daughter only legitimate heir yeah and me who should be in the throne anyway oh, this is what perfect. a match made in heaven under the sea no i'm bum, just kidding bum, ba, dum. <laughs> up here in france bum, 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 ba, dum. <laughs> les poissons les poissons i love les poissons <laughs> and the then we chop and to serve little fish boom, boom, boom. you do know this song dude <laughs> The French chef is the best one. I know. He's so funny. He's unhinged. <laughs> and that's why we love him. Is there a problem here? So they sign this treaty. Henry and Catherine get married during a time of relative peace. Yeah, it's tense. Relative. It's tense in that court. Very tense peace. Henry and Catherine have a kid, narcissistically named Henry. Oh, <laughs> look at oh, look at this. Yeah. This little me. Yeah. I'm going to name you me. Me. <laughs> Me too. Ha-ha. Me junior. You got a little dick? I got a little dick. You must We're be related. me. <laughs> <laughs> They're in Paris, so they rule and the baby Henry is now next in line for the France for the French throne. Again, for some fucking Nous reason. Dauphin. Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean he and and by relation he is the, kind of the most legitimate king at yeah. this point. Because, You've got two sides yeah, that were warring sides. and both had a legitimate heir yeah. essentially that then got married. It's kind of like the end of the War of the Roses. Right. Exactly. With Elizabeth and Henry V. Mm-hmm. Or Henry the Seventh, sorry, this is Henry the Fifth. Yeah. My bad. So Henry goes into battle. He's traveling again. And then in 1422, he becomes ill. And in August, he dies. Catherine and baby Henry are now without the King of England. And what was more in October, Charles died as well. Hey! So both kings are gone. Okay, so Catherine is now in charge of the king. Of one of the kings. One of the kings of France. And then the Dauphine, who has been illegitimized, is... 
He's coming in saying he's, I should be king. He's still underage, but also should be king soon. Yeah. Does he have supporters that are like... Kind yes, of, the Armagnacs okay, yeah. are very much on his side. Okay, so they're already dusting up again. Right. So baby Henry and widowed mother Catherine are now officially in charge of England and France. Oh, the paperwork. <laughs> Come on now. That's oh, a lot. The bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> my God, I don't want that job. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you're taking care of a baby. God. Fuck. Anyway, sorry. So she's got two kingdoms to look after. The war rages on. The Scots yeah. and the French join together against the English. Things are getting messy and they're getting complicated. And the Dauphin is not happy that a baby is in charge of France, so he's claiming his right to the French throne. And how old is this Dauphin? He's like 14 or 15. Oh, fuck off, little dude. <laughs> fuck off. He's still that little ward. Like, he's, the yeah. Armagnacs are still oh, yeah, taking care of him. That's right. So, where there's conflict, there's always take people who take advantage of Chaos it. Chaos is a ladder. Chaos is a fucking ladder. And people who take advantage of that interminably depressing quality in which humanity has been imbued. Hope. Ugh. A rumor started going around. A woman, possibly named Marie Robin of Avignon, prophesied that an armed virgin would come forward and save France. All right, hold on. She prophesied and, she they, prophesied. and they listened to a woman. This was likely a false rumor whipped up again from an earlier attribution to Merlin, who fictitiously predicted that a virgin carrying a banner would put an end to the suffering of France. So this woman's a wizard. No, she's a repeat of an earlier wizard. It's oh. liter she's literally a meme. It's it's a repeat. It's oh, it's a okay. it's a retelling of a yeah, thing. Yeah, so basically she's just using she's basically repackaging. She's relying on their lack of knowledge of Merlin to be like, "Hey, guess what? I saw a vision and um but like what's yeah, her a virgin off? is gonna um she's, she's like reading her notes off her hand <laughs> like she's gonna liberate hold on France. i smudged this one second is is that that a can she brings a candle banner? up she's yeah she's armed she's armed there we go yeah interesting so they listened to her why did they believe I, her i guess she was i don't know a, a seer i don't i don't know why she okay, was sorry yeah, for i'm digging a little too you into the weeds digging way deeper into one random person ma'am i like weed <laughs> i'm in the weeds <laughs> <laughs> little celebratory huff <laughs> sorry please continue the armies were swept up in a fervor and literal stacks of bodies rotted through the french countryside and through the land of dom remy was surrounded by Bur mm -mm. and though the land of dom remy was surrounded by burgundians who sided with henry's side of things dom remy itself and its people were supportive of the armagnacs and the dauphin gaining power over his own country again so this is all coming to a head in this one spot? Uh, not just in this one spot, like all over France. I Fuck. mean, this by this time, it is hard to describe the absolute, like, fucking carnage that was the Hundred Years' War. Oh, bring it happened out over dead. 116 years in three distinct periods. <laughs> you keep repeating <laughs> this, like, word for word. Yeah. Why is <laughs> this so important? important. We know Act One, Act Two. We are no. You're fine. Um, it's from it's from uh. So I've got probably like last year or something. Uh -huh. Um, last podcast on the left did a like uh -huh. a history series on a d fucking terrible French serial killer that ends up working with this person. And, oh. Um. So they have to remind oh, okay. people that it was instead of it's not a hundred years war. It was it was a hundred years war that was over uh, that was one hundred and sixteen years All right. over three distinct periods. So they made it war the whole plus thing. sixteen. Yeah. Just remember a hundred <laughs> plus sixteen. But w what I'm saying is, by this time, it was the third distinct period. Yeah, we are coming. We're in the third yeah, one. We're, we're so in act three. by this time, we've had. Pretty much a hundred years of bodies dropping throughout the French countryside. Yeah, everybody's so traumatized. People are literally rotting in in the fields. Are they fields. actually literally rotting I mean, out they, in the they, open? Who's there? Who's still alive to bury to bury them? I just who's said still earlier, alive bring out your graves? dead. Where are they? Yeah, Where's they, Monty Python? And then humor? they buy, pile the fucking bodies. It's literally oh. just people rotting oh throughout God. France because of these wars. It's fucking crazy. So now crazy. it's just traumatized children having to refight the same war that generations previously have not been fighting. Uh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. Ouch. This is this is easily three generations of four generations of soldiers for one war. Or Maybe that's for why one the f- big war. God. Yeah, the French really know how to live in chaos. They've had like the French revolutions. This year, hundred hundred plus sixteen years war. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Ouch. I, I feel for these people, my God, when will it stop? Not yet. Okay. All right. So, even the mo. <laughs> even though the main parts of the quarrel lie elsewhere in the country, the land she was on had been affected by the war. Jean was seven by the time the conflict hit the town, and it just grew from there. Mm. When she was 13 in 1425, Dom Remy was attacked. And their castle, their cattle was stolen. I was going to say their castle. No, not their their castle. Their cattle, their cows. Their cows were stolen. Oh. Yeah, their moo cows. Momos. You took their food and their dairy and their beloved, you know, bovine friends. Peasant farmers losing their livestock were especially cruel. That's harsh. That's livelihood. Yeah. Was especially cruel. And so the citizens of the town became firmly anti-English in order to achieve peace in the land again. Now, Jeanne did not exist in a vacuum and had a commoner's view of the situation, which meant she was anti-English. And Mm. it was just after this attack that Jeanne had her first vision. Jeanne had a vision! Jeanne had a vision. Wait a minute. She was in the garden when suddenly St. Michael appeared to her. This is Joan of Arc! Surrounded by angels. Joan. Jean. Now I'm getting Okay. Joan of Arc. She had her. <laughs> so she's talking to the. 33 in- minutes. That's great. Yeah. Well, you kept saying Jean. <laughs> I know. I know. Because that's her name. Okay. Well, I didn't know this shit. That's I mean, her- they do also call her Joan, but. Yeah, but that's more anglicized. Yeah. Okay. And since we're pretty anti-English right now in this episode. You're like, I refuse. I refuse. You refuse. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the hoity-toity French version. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> you keep slapping your knees. Oh my God, girl. You were just on one today. I'm sorry. I'm excited to see you. Uh, it's been a few weeks. Yeah. It's been. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had family in town, so I was just... Running, running every day, and the you know all of this. Anyway, so she yes. was in the garden when suddenly St. Michael appeared to her, surrounded by angels. Whoa, Michael, what are you doing here? Literally. Like, I would do. Anyway, go ahead. When they left, she wept because she wanted them to take her with them. Interesting. Well, I guess, yeah, her world sucked. Yeah. So she's like, can I go to heaven now? Can God heaven call me up? fucking amazing. <laughs> yeah. Can I leave? <laughs> I would like to leave. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> Does that sound familiar to any listeners out there? Does anybody else think that this world is also coming to chaos? Anyway. Anyway. Side note. <laughs> I'm doing fine. Oh, my God. So she began having these visions frequently. She often had them when the church bells were rung. So I will pause for a second. I've heard, and I will double check all of my references here, but I heard that there is a theory that she also was possibly schizophrenic or having delusions, bipolar maybe. Possibly epileptic. Yeah, there's ideas, but with all of the heavy religious overtones of the time, and they didn't know anything about mental health, this was absolutely, for her, God and the angels talking to her. Absolutely it was. So, yes. I mean, her motivations are all fairly put out in the open here. Well, and I wonder about that, too. Like, it's the precipitating factor of the bells being rung. Is it, like, an yeah. immediate thing? Does she drop down when it happens? Like, it's a trigger? Or was this, like, a, and is this, like, yeah. a weekly church bells thing? Or I mean, is this, like, yeah. every day she's having these visions? And, and that's a great question when it comes to mental health. I mean, even now, they still don't know all of the reasons, yeah. like, what causes the hallucinations to really, you know, come up to the surface, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting to say that, yeah, it's the church bells is typically when she would have these. So it is, it is fascinating. Uh, Sorry, I got all his history channel on you for a second. I was like, no, I think that's fascinating. Anyway, but yeah, so she would have these visions. She wanted to go to heaven. I get it, girl. Right. So um, some of these visions included St. Margaret of Antioch and St. Catherine of Alexandria, Hmm. both who who were both known as virgin saints, women who fought against powerful enemies, tortured and martyred, and kept their virginity until they died. Yep. 
The virginity was a big deal, I guess. <laughs> uh, at one point, she had been dating a boy, but they weren't betrothed. And yeah, but like, when you say dating girl, what like, do you... Maybe they held hands once oh. and they maybe thought they were cute. But then they like, felt guilty ooh. and they said, yeah, sorry. Yeah, because they were French religious people. It was like, you're super Ugh, hot. But it sounds also so cannot. stressful. You couldn't just like a boy and hold his hand and maybe kiss him, maybe get a little freaky out. And you're 16. In the French countryside, it's fucking gorgeous out there. And, and like, if you're nobody's ignoring around. all the bodies rotting around you, like, it's probably pretty... like maybe a billion people on the earth max at this time. Okay. How many people do you think were on the earth at this time? No, I think that's that's probably All a good right, estimate. It's like no one's around. But yeah. I guess they always thought God was watching. Well, and everyone else was dead. They're all oh. scattered around the French countryside. Way to bring back the reality of the situation. That's I what forgot I'm about saying. that. If you yeah. just forget about all the bodies being littered I, around. Well, it's a gorgeous area. If you just don't <laughs> look at the rotting corpse, look like, look up a little bit. Just don't look down that far. Look at the it, sky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's gorgeous. <laughs> Don't breathe. It smells. I know. Doggy style is very, very popular in French countryside because both of you have to look up. Yeah, yeah. You just can't look around. (laughs) Anyway. Anyway. So (laughs) she she decides uh, when she hears the voices of St. Margaret and St. Catherine, she just vows to stay a virgin until death, preserving her quote unquote virtue. Um, The boy later tried to accuse her of breaking a promise of marriage. Whoa, okay, bud. You well, told me that you were going to give me your vagina and your personhood. Where's my ring? Well, I'm 14 and so are you, so... All I right, cool. Well, now I'd rather be a virgin till death. Thanks. The Lord told you yes, to Yes, exactly, be a virgin and I do not death. ignore God. Oh, my God, okay. It's probably better that we break up. Exactly. Bye. Sounds like a complicated relationship. He didn't say what? Hmm? <laughs> how's that <laughs> we really gotta work on our improv b has reminded us so many times i think we're working on it anyway so he whatever did he get like did he get anywhere with that claim or did she just go fuck no, off and he I'm, doesn't show up anywhere I'm else in this god story now. she's literally working for yeah, god she now. has a better boss now, Charles the Dauphin is well past the point he should have been crowned, like, a couple years ago. This it had is been, the... This is the seventh, I think. This is the son of Charles, Charles the Mad. Charles Okay, I was yeah. double-checking. He is the one who was Oh, Ill- that's right. Henry's son is Henry, and Charles' son is Charles. Yes. So it's just Henry and Charles again. Yep, Got exactly. it. exactly. So now, and now, since it's, since they're both the grown-ups, it's... Uh, actually, Henry is not grown up, so Lil Henry is still Lil Henry. Is he like what, like toddler? He's like in a he's like a school? teenager by this point, okay. or, oh, or, oh. or like nine or ten by this point. By okay. the time we're going to be getting into the story, he's he's not into leadership yet. Okay, okay, he's probably still discovering that he has a penis and it feels good to touch it. Got it. <laughs> That's the age we're talking about. Wow. I just wanted to make it, you like know, nine like nine or that's, ten. Maybe that's what he's worried about. Okay, <laughs> is that when? I'm not even. I have we're not no gonna idea. Go into that. I'm just making a know. wild assumption. I'm making a wild assumption. That's here. a wild assumption. All right. Uh, so, it had been years since Charles's daddy had died, and he hadn't been crowned, which really challenged his ability to claim king. And right. when his papa died, he'd been placed with the Armagnacs, mm-hmm. um, Bernard. Bernard. Uh, and the Armagnac family was all about the ascendancy of Charles to the throne. Right. However, the Burgundians controlled the town where he'd be traditionally crowned, which was a town called Reims. So basically, the southern half of France was still controlled by France and yeah. by Charles and by the Armagnacs. And the northwestern part that was kind of closest to England, that was pretty much controlled by England. Yeah. And then the Burgundians controlled a lot of land around the eastern side right of the country but so it's kind of like unless he can get crowned there they don't think that the country would see charles as legitimate couldn't they crown him somewhere else yeah they could but i think it wouldn't be as legitimate i think it was like a holy city for them again i can bring it back to world of game of thrones if you've seen house of the dragon it's kind of like what they did with aegon where spoiler alert um, i don't haven't seen it yet do you want to see it yeah okay i won't say anything good (laughs) I want to see. I'm, I'm, I redact that yeah. spoiler alert. <laughs> so Charles still controlled most of the southern part, um, but there was a, 
a town called Orleans and mm-hmm. that Orlean, whatever. I don't fucking care. Uh, Old Orleans. So everything north of that was controlled by the English. Um, uh-huh. And then the Burgundians were working with the English, but then they also con- fully controlled their own little spots here and there. Got it. Say. Got it. So it's basically like <clears throat> most of the nation is just ready for Charles. And then this one area is just like holding off. Um, the, so the Southern half is ready for Charles. The Northern half is ready for Henry ah. and the little leftover crumbs on the East side. That's the Burgundians. I see. Okay. And nobody's fighting over that. Got it. <laughs> Nobody, nobody don't cares. Care. Yeah. Nobody needs I that. I think they, I'm sure they probably are, but that's not where our story lies today. Yeah, they haven't discovered it's the perfect wine country yet. So Jeanne had heard about this virgin prophecy of the armed virgin who would save France. And she declared that she was that promised virgin. It's me. Hi. I volunteer. I'm the virgin. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> I'm the virgin. It's me. I'm the virgin. It's me. <laughs> Anyway, so in 1428, she asks her uncle to take her to a town, Vaucouleur, V-A-U-C-O-U-L-E-U-R-S. Good luck, us. Right. So she uh, asks yeah. com- she asks Commander Robert de Beaujacourt to take her to see the Armagnacs so she can tell them that she's the promised virgin and she'll save France. She just needs an armed escort to help secure the journey there. Everybody's no putting a lot of stock into this rumor of this virgin. Like, this is a no one girl from a nowhere town in nowhere France. Yeah. And she's like, I'm ready I got to the see the king now. Send me with a soldier. And it's just like, and people do. <laughs> no. No? No. Oh, I thought at some point they did. I guess De Baudricourt laughs in her face oh. and sends her back home. He's like, who the fuck do you think you are? Never so mind. So she goes well, she back to her town, some. and then the town is attacked by Burgundians. Oh. And this time they set fire to the town, and they destroyed the crops, and they sent the townspeople fleeing. Oh, fuck. So Jeanne and her family were forced to leave their farm, and it was around this time that she started getting the visions that she needed to leave Domremy and go to Chinon, which was where the Dauphine lived. Uh-huh. And so she goes back to Vaucouleur. Uh, Vaucouleur. 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 That I, better. That was I better really, than mine. I would Va- have to wait for Vaucouleur. a French person, and they're going to be like, oh my God, that uh, was horrible. Vaucouleur in January 1429. And she again pleads her case to de Baudricourt. And this time, two of Baudricourt's guys get on board, and they're like, yeah, let's go. We'll provide you armed escort we believe you that's great uh their names were jean de metz and bertrand de poulegny poulangy it's just interesting i'm still just like sitting here going i guess with my current modern brain i'd just be like who the fuck do you think you are little girl yeah i guess i I don't blame him for laughing in her face he's still yeah so for a second time he's like nah fuck you go away go back home He's annoyed with her. I understand. I, yeah, everyone understands but I, De Baudricourt's, like position on this. But I'm not mad at her. I'm going to go, go girl, you get it. You t- try again. So by this time, Jeanne and her story had gotten out, kind mm-hmm. of started spreading Getting among viral. the countryside. So a man named Charles, the Duke of Lorraine, mm. a different Charles. Who <gasps> like had take- quiche Lorraine. What? Quiche? The food? Never had it. Oh, hmm. it's really good. I'll have to get one for next time. So he was just a local duke, and he'd taken ill, and he thought, like, okay, well, if she's the promised virgin, maybe she's also imbued with supernatural powers. Of course, because if you don't have sex, you have powers. She might be a witch. Right. So <laughs> he summoned her to the town of Nancy, and she arrived, and she couldn't cure him. Of course. Because she was a teenage girl. Yeah. With not hu- with with superhuman powers. No superhuman powers. Yeah. However, she did tell him off for living with his mistress. Hilarious. But I get it. <laughs> like, you come up here and you want me <laughs> to do the impossible. But here you are. <laughs> Living with your mistress? You want me to perform heavenly mil- miracles when you live in such I can't do the miracles because you're tarnished. Ways? Literally. Exactly. I can't prove my my holiness in the um, uh, presence of your sins. Yeah. He's living an ungodly life. You don't deserve it. Exactly. That's it. 
So all of that was in January 14, 29. And mm. finally, in February, after a long set of losses on the French side from Henry, who had just taken control of Orleans, uh, de Beaudricourt is like, fine, 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 fine. If it gets you to shut the fuck shut up. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. I will send you with some people. So they... Or they send her with some people, some soldiers, to go see the king. And in order to ensure her safe passage, they give her soldiers mm. men's clothing. Yeah, so she doesn't come back. Yep. It was done. We want to make sure she <clears throat> makes it. Yeah, so it was done in an attempt to hide her identity as a woman, make her safer yeah. on the journey. But she liked the way they fit. So for the rest of her life, Jeanne yeah. wore men's clothing. She, she discovered pants are awesome. Pants are so awesome. Yeah. You know what's even better? Pants with elastic waistbands. <gasps> That's why oh, I'm wearing them today. Oh, girl. Hell yeah. Yes. Amazing. I love sweatpants. I have, they have been my favorite article of clothing <laughs> since high school. Charles and Jean met in early 1429. Initially, he didn't want to receive her because who the fuck is this co? Yeah, like. <laughs> who is this bitch? She sounds a little off her rocker. I understand. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so. He does something funny, um, I think. Yeah, he didn't. So two two days go by, mm-hmm. and she's still hanging out. She's like, I'm <laughs> yeah, just waiting, waiting, waiting. Uh, and Charles decides he's going to give her a little test. He's like, mm, okay, let's see if she really is sent by God. So he hides himself among his courtiers, mm-hmm. and he can just be one of the people, so she can't tell who yeah. it is. This bitch... She walks right in and she picks him out of the lineup like she'd been assigned to him as personal security detail. I've seen your photo. (laughs) She said she'd come to raise the siege of Orleans and to get Charles safely to Raymond. We're going to get you to that coronation, sir. Mm -hmm. We're going to get you there. We just have to get you there. Yeah. Do the ceremony. Take a picture. Right. And go. So she came in out of nowhere and basically validated the fuck out of this illegitimized king. Oh, he must have been um, so excited. Yes. He, all of this claim <laughs> fuck had been... Finally! Yeah, it had been endlessly challenged and literally stripped from him. Um, so at this point, Charles asked everyone else to leave. He's like, oh, okay, we need to talk in private. Uh-oh. So he granted a private audience with this weird little girl in men's clothing. And she said that he was the legitimate king and that she knew he really was the king, the mm-hmm. rightful heir to the throne. And what was more, she said that he, she herself was the promised virgin mm. here to deliver salvation to the grand nation of France. Excellent. Okay. Charles wasn't immediately swayed by the admittedly mad admissions of the promised virgin. Just like I'm sure every time someone proclaims their Jesus reincarnate, the people around them are like, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Good for you. Yeah. So he has a number of people test her. He t- she's taken to a nearby town called Poitiers, and she's uh. tested by a council of theologians, and they say, Jeanne is a good Catholic girl. Mm-hmm. A little TM okay. right there, a little trademark, good Catholic girl. And then she was sent elsewhere. She was stripped nude, and she had a medieval pap smear. Of course. Basically to verify that if. virginity. I hate that. Yes, the virgin skin so much has not it. yet been destroyed. Because that diminishes her, her communion. So, so to get messages from God and the saints the and the angels, you have intact. to have yes. a hymen intact. The yeah. hymen mm-hmm. is the radio signal to heaven. Yeah, it's that's the, their it's idea. the satellite. Yep. Right. The Jesus satellite. She must be of God if she's still well, then I it. went off the grid at 17. <laughs> We do not even need to talk about that. I think I mentioned on the uteruses one how fucking traumatic mine was when that happened. Mm. Right, right, right. Mm. Well, anyway, anyway. so she, ha- she passes with flying colors, she, I take yes, it. Yes, the virgin skin hadn't been destroyed. Oh, she was don't a god. call it that. A blessing. Ugh. A blessing from the Lord. Nasty. <laughs> Just nasty. So by every weird fucking measurement that they have, this girl was who she claimed. She was the promised virgin from the prophecy and the theological council agreed and suggested to the king that it couldn't not help the journey to have this girl along it looks good it kind of looks good get the pr guy in here literally maybe she could be of use so she goes back to chinon in april um or she goes back to 
where the king, where the dauphine is. Yeah. And then in April, the dauphine sets her up with military housing. She gets a squire, and she's joined by two of her brothers, Jean and Pierre. Okay. Are they putting her through military training now? No. Uh, basically, a little bit. I not, hope so not because it doesn't lot. seem like she has any background. Yeah. Don't give her a sword they're yet. Not, they're not really training her. They're okay. just giving her the they're title. Use, oh. Yeah, it's, she's a figurehead at this I point. I see. Um. Jen says, it's not here that I'm going to be of use. It's to Orleans we need yeah. to go. That's where I can prove my mission. If I'm going to show God actually sent me, it's in Orleans where I can actually show it. So she was already wearing dude clothing, right? So in order to go into the battlefield, Charles decides he's going to go in on Jen and he commissions yeah. a suit of armor for he's her. He's investing now. Yeah, he is. So he designed... She de- he designs her some armor or he has armor commissioned for her. Mm -hmm. And then she designs her very own banner. Um, The standard portrayed Christ in judgment and the banner bore the name of Jesus. Of course. Charles gets her all dressed up and looks her up and down. and is like, Hmm, something is missing. missing. That's when he takes off her glasses. Hmm. (laughs) And then she's pretty for (laughs) the first time. Then she's pretty enough. (laughs) Suddenly she has a full face of makeup. Now people can see how beautiful you are. <sighs> Your pimples disappear. Oh my God. It's like you got new eyes. <laughs> nah, he's like, what's missing? Uh, oh, a sword. A sword's missing. We don't have a sword. Oh, and John crap. says They gave her a sword. No, she's like, St. Catherine's got my back on that. I'm. She's, she's holding one for me at the Church of St. Catherine. Interesting. I, I'll get it when I get it, right? So that's a church on the south side of Tours. And when they get there, sure enough, there's this big ass sword seemingly just waiting to be used How? for righteous intent. Does she know all this? How does she know? This is about the time Jeanne started calling herself Jeanne the Maiden. Ah. So this war is outside raging this whole time. The Armagnacs are not doing well, but they'd recently gained a very small win when the Burgundians backed out of the Siege of Orleans. Yeah. Basically because they were bored. <laughs> They're like, there's nothing going on out here. So that was less support on the English side, and the English, therefore, tasked with the idea of doing something for themselves, were debating on whether or not to just give up the entire mission. Basically, when the Burgundians left, they were like, but that means that that we'd have to be in a siege. And I don't, I don't want to be in a siege. <laughs> That doesn't sound good. This doesn't I'd sound... I'd miss my afternoon tea, and that sounds bad. I was like, this doesn't really sound voluntary. Uh, it doesn't really sound worth my time. Yeah, okay. Oh, my God. I got parties to go to. Come on. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because that's more important. So, but this had nothing to do with the soldiers fighting for the Armagnac cause, who were all very tired because they'd been fighting a lot. Mm-hmm. All right. Before I get into this next part, we need to address... And acknowledge the extremely sad state of affairs France was in at the time. Mm -hmm. It was broken into three distinct periods over the 116 years. The French people were just existentially exhausted. Of course. They'd been fighting their whole lives, or their fathers had been fighting before them, or their grandfathers before them, and most of them had gotten murdered. Everyone knew someone who had lost their lives to this fucking war. Yeah. It's a lot. (sighs) And France was literally still scattered with dead bodies. Like, I, I cannot tell you. I still find I, that horrifying. Yeah, I cannot overemphasize that enough. Um, no one's left alive to bury them. So they just are out there. That's just great fertilizer, you know? Mm. Don't. Mm, I don't know. Really good for orchards. The only thing <clears throat> I can say is, you know, some animals that scavenge. Anyway. All right. <laughs> I mean, they got to eat some. Yeah. Yeah. They can get picked clean by different animals for sure. I don't know if sure. a silver lining. Yeah, I mean, hmm. Sir, either you're rotting life. away and mushrooms are eating you or animals are eating yeah, you. Yeah, something's going to eat you. If you have armor on, I think the mushrooms get you before the vultures do. Yeah, they can get in there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so right. um, Jean's impending arrival has already spread to the troops, and in late April, she shows up with an army carrying supplies for those inside Orlean. The bastard of Orlean, the commander Jean d'Orlean, met her and was able to get her into the city without any trouble. Jean gets to Orlean, and her personality quickly provides a boon to their wavering spirits. So she's good for morale. Oh, yeah. Probably because she's so fucking sure of herself. 
Well, yeah. This is the promise. Is this the promised virgin? This is the promised virgin. I mean, oh my she God. certainly seems She's going to save France. So. She's going to liberate us. Okay. Well, you're putting a lot of faith in a 16-year-old with a lot well, of gumption. But apparently she also was just a nice person. Like, they just liked and her as a person. Good. And that I understand. And the idea that God was providing divine assistance helped convince them of the righteousness of their cause, yeah. reinvigorating them once again. You have the big guy on your side. It's, yeah. it's a pretty good morale booster. And it actually shifted the conflict. Uh, what had been a long-established fight over land and inheritance uh, – Jean turned into a religious war, mm. basically, because if God and his righteous virgin, TM, were righteous on, virgin, TM, <laughs> trademark, were on the French side, what kind of crap Christians were the English who fought against them? I could tell you, <laughs> but it hasn't happened yet in England. They're still pretty Catholic. This was further pushed when Jeanne dictated a letter to the Duke of Bedford, telling him that God had sent her to drive him out of France. Hmm. Her personally. I'd be getting that letter and going, okay, who the fuck is this? So she's in the army and she's at Orleans. Now what? They don't use her as a commander and they don't let her on to council. She's got no military yeah, experience. Yeah, no fucking experience. She is a peasant from fucking nowhere, Dom Remy. She's a mascot. Right. But at every battle that was the most brutal and wherever the fighting was the most intense... There was Jeanne yeah. fighting alongside people. She's a foolhardy young girl with a, a head full of steam. Yeah. And she flew her banal. And delusions. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the delusions. She flew the banner on the battlefield and was kind of treated like a mascot or a pet or what, like a type of a figure. Pet. Like team they pet. They gave her know? treats from the table. <laughs> But it wasn't long before the young woman gained the trust and the support from the troops in the battlefield. And despite her lack of official command, troops started listening to her for advice. Interesting. It was because they thought she was fighting for their salvation. Yeah. They're like, well, she's actually on the field. Yeah. She's like, and she hasn't died yet. And if she's of God, like her advice must be good because he's probably the one giving it to her. I mean, you right? would assume God's advice is pretty good. Yeah. So she began giving advice when asked about field maneuvers, weaponry, and artillery. I, thought I was like, hey, John, uh, my wife is cheating on me, and I don't know how to confront her about it. What should I do? <laughs> it's like, dear no John. Help there, but when to attack or fall back on the battlefield, that's your girl. Okay. So on May 4th, the Armagnacs started their attacks on the Bastille of St. Loup. Uh, Jean had heard about this plan, so she rode out to help them and, of course, took her banner with her. And just as she arrived, the Armagnacs were fleeing. They were in the middle of a retreat. Hmm. But Jeanne and her banner inspired the soldiers. They booted and rallied and went back for a second attack. Oh, well, they started chasing after him. And then they took the Bastille. Mmm, the Bastille. The Bastille. It was around at the fort. Time. It's that's just what the name is for the fort. Oh. So it's it, the Bastille is the different forts that they've. Oh, okay. I thought it was the Bastille. No, and I was like, um, oh fuck. <laughs> this one is the Bastille of Saint Loup. Got uh, it. Lou, loop, L O U P, Lou, Lou. I don't know. So the next day was Ascension Thursday. So things were very Ascension peace. Thursday. Yeah. So people took a break. The soldiers oh, took a break. It was like Taco they ate. Tuesday. Yeah. No, this was like a a church thing. So uh, okay. they they partied. They rested. They ate. They had a church party. Yeah. It was a whole thing. Um, but Jean never won to let a moment go. She took the time to dictate another letter to the English, warning them again to leave France. They tied the message to a bolt, which was then fired by a crossbowman into the English territory. And this is how I want to send all my text messages. From here on out. Absolutely. Yes. By a cross, I would by love, crossbow. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even by pigeon, but this specifically. <laughs> yeah. I do want to do, especially an angry text. <laughs> Make it a howler. Oh, God. Ronald uh, Weasley. Joan of Arc. <laughs> you left your mother on the farm. On Friday, they were back at it. They took St. Jean Le Blanc, which the Armagnacs thought was just pretty good for the day. They were like, all right, we got a thing. We, we won. We're going we to stop. We checked it off our to-do list. We can go home now. Literally. That was the attitude. But Jean was like, Nah, we're we are gonna keep going. So it. she pushed for the army to She's move forward. She's the extra credit type. She is. She's that bitch that's like teacher, teacher. You what forgot about the to homework? sign our homework. Fuck off. So she pushed for them to move forward, and they listened to her, and they ended up taking Les Augustines, which was 
a fortress built around a monastery in Orlean. Ah. After this, the Armagnacs thought, hey, this is pretty good. Let's consolidate and take stocks because we got two things for the day. And John is still like, let's go. I'm ready. So the next. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Exactly. So the next morning, the army began its assault on Les Tourelles. Uh, this was the main big bad of the Orleans battle. That was the last English stronghold. All right. Let's kick these fish and chips out of here. <laughs> right? These fish and chip loving <laughs> Brit fuckers. Fucking baked bean motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking roasted tomato for breakfast motherfuckers. <laughs> what the hell is that? I don't anyway, know. I don't. I, mm. <laughs> Never had one. Don't care for an English breakfast. But I haven't had all an English of it breakfast. Looks disgusting. I love fish and chips. I love fish I and chips. I do love fish and chips. When Gary and I were moving a him up the coast, that was one of the things like we were, we decided to take the coastal route instead of the slightly quicker inland route. And we would stop for like seafood all yeah. the way up. Yeah. See, that's what you do. He couldn't walk. So it was like pretty much what was accessible. Yeah. 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 Whatever we can, whatever's in reach. And uh, there were a lot of nice little, like just little spots along the freeway, like along the yeah. little highway that you could just kind of stop in and get, that's excellent. Get some seafood and move on. Love that. The battle was bloody and Jen got right down in the mud with everyone else and fought. Oh, girl, get it. So here's the thing. She's been waving this banner, right? She's down in the trenches with her other soldiers. She's showing her support by waving this fucker, fucking banner in the trench. I right? imagine she's waving it so fucking hard. Yeah! <laughs> and it probably came as no surprise to the people around her when she got shot in the shoulder with an of arrow. Of course. She's a fucking target. <laughs> just waving this huge banner around. <laughs> And she's been a thorn in Henry's side. Oh, my God. Yeah. Girl, you made yourself so obvious. This is I like, this know, is what right? pure determination and absolutely no strategic thought. <laughs> it's just absolutely <laughs> astounding. And I know what? More power to her. Girl, I feel the oh heart God. and the morale And it was boosting. right between, like, the, her head and the banner. It was, like, just right down Oof, the middle, uh, you know? So she left for a bit to go get that fixed I'm up. I'm going to go powder my nose. Get back. <laughs> But then she came back. Yeah, I knew it. And she helped finish the battle. That is that God-given energy. (laughs) On Sunday, May 8th, 1429, like, what, March, April, literally two months after she meets the Dauphine, Mm -hmm. the English retreated from the city of Orleans, and they ended the siege and the battle. Nice. So This girl is lucky as fuck. Yeah, the French got control of the city. And of course, they're going to be like, it's because John was here. Jean. Jean returns to Chinon with the Armagnacs. And when she gets there, she declares that she was sent by God. Je suis en mission pour Dieu. Oui, oui. But we'll hear more about that in part two. Part two. Excellent. I want to hear how these delusions turn out. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. We'll yeah. Get there. She's a... Uh, Interesting. I, it's like growing up, I always thought like, oh my God, she was such a fierce teenager like, girl. Like she was like just ready to fight. And now I'm sitting here going, girl was just following delusions. But I, she did something with it. So like good for her. Yeah. There weren't any cops pulling her over on the highway, telling her to get off her horse. You're not supposed to be no, driving in this condition. She just had a convincing enough story that they were like, cool, let's go. And it just like works out. She just... Yeah. It's interesting. It is I, so interesting I, to me. I had never actually, like, I knew that it was like she had a vision by God and it helped him defeat, you know, help them defeat the English in this war. Yeah. But that was literally as much detail as I had ever heard. And yeah, so that was like it, as much as I had. Reading and like, this has been very interesting. Yeah, there was one drunk history episode. That's how I knew where Vanessa Hudgens plays Joan of Arc. <laughs> and that's how I knew that she comes in and the Dauphin is hiding and but <laughs> on this like lineup of people and Vanessa Hudgens did a great job in that episode. Um, but I will say, did I get the drama of the moment, right? Where no. she comes in and she's like, bah! I mean, pretty much, <laughs> but she's like, what's up? I'm Joan of Arc. That guy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I will say one thing about, it's interesting when you're talking about now we're talking about the French and their reaction to somebody who kind of unbeknownst to them was having a mental health episode, potentially, 
of course, there's no definitive answer on that. But just w- from what we've heard, we can make a case for it. But then there's, you know, the um, Dancing Plague was also French. Yeah. Strasbourg. Yeah. And they treated that plague of what was just complete madness in their eyes with compassion. I think it would have been just one Just like thing, this in a weird way. It, I think it would have been one thing if she had been one of many people who had right. come with visions. But she was the only one that showed up and she yeah. was like, I'm it. I'm it. Here I am. It, take it or leave it. Yeah. You're, it, I'm God's call. Are you going to pick it up? Basically. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. <laughs> ring, ring. I'm looking at you. <laughs> this is your phone ringing. Banana phone. It's God speaking. <laughs> Um, but I mean, in Strasbourg, it's like, instead of just like putting these people and locking them away and hiding them, Mm -hmm. all these people dancing until their feet bled in the streets. Yeah. They were like, let's get a band out here. Let's try to get them to dance it all out. And then that didn't work. And they're like, well, let's take them to a church and see if maybe we can do a penance thing. And it wasn't just ostracizing. And it's like, in this case, it's one person. Mm -hmm. And again, it was all very religious based in their thought process. Mm-hmm. But again, it's this very crazy outlandish statement. This one woman's making. And yeah, one guy laughed at her a few times, but like, but then they weren't, they didn't call anymore. her a witch. They didn't burn her. Like, you know, England would have done that. Oh yeah. Scotland, Sweden, all of them would have been doing that. But France, weirdly <laughs> enough, they didn't get, well, they've been pretty vicious. Well, I think the really, like, the, the super judgmental religious fervor came so from Protestantism more than uh, anything else. Yeah. Catholics and this, have a nice kind of built-in, like, shame shield kind of... I guess so. <laughs> They're like, but it's about God. It, it's about God. It's about... Interesting. It's, it's a lifestyle and Interesting. Kind of it's it's, it's and, a message from God and not Jesus, because I guess... I don't know. I don't know a lot. I'm very uh, raised outside of religion. So I find it fascinating the logics that kind of come structured within certain faiths. Right. Anyway, this is a weird deep dive in at the end, but I'm very excited to see what happens in, in part two. I well, want to see what she does. It's interesting because obviously like there's still, which is crazy to me is that there's still debate on this. Yeah. Historians still talk about like, was she or was she not actually sent of God? Like did, you know, did this or did this not happen? And was it divine or was it a crazy person with their crazy delusions? And just right time, right place, right exactly. time, right king. Yeah. Interesting. And it's still a debate. Uh, but we will get to that in part two. I think you know where I stand on this. Yes. But crazy catch coincident us, time. Catch us next week for another episode of The Crowning. The Crowning. We are hoping that you are enjoying it. Uh, it has been very fun to make. Yeah. Any and all feedback, anything you want us to start deep diving on, like uh, if you want more descriptions of outfits um, certain people are wearing, I will tell you I'm going to be point <laughs> pretty soon. Margaret's going to be wearing some shit that I'm going to start talking about. The next episode that we're about to watch is a I great one. I am so excited about. I'm so excited about it. Anyway, uh, we're, we'll again, get we're there. getting into a tangent. Um, this has been Well Behaved <laughs> Women. Thank you for listening. Yes, you can find us online on Instagram, on TikTok, on mm-hmm. Reddit, on Facebook. Um, we are on threads, if anybody's there. Yes. Uh, However you'd like to engage with us would be great. Yep, just at Well Behaved Women Podcast. And if you want to find our website to see all the episodes and all the extra images or resource links, that's at wellbehavedwomenpodcast.com. And if you like the show, like and subscribe wherever yeah, you're listening. Us. We appreciate it. Yes, please. We want to hear from you. And and in the meantime, we love you. And, and it's been, been a fucking podcast. It's been a fucking podcast. Bye-bye. Bye.